Hello and welcome to this very exciting episode of the Media Tech Podcast. Today I am joined by my friend Ish. How's it going, man? Pretty good. How about yourself? Pretty good. Um, so you are a Media Tech graduate of 2013 from Dallas. Is that correct? That is correct. Cool. From Recording Arts? Yes. Awesome. Um, and Ish here, we'll get into it, but he has worked on some super huge projects and with some super huge people. Lil Wayne, the upcoming Trolls 2, the list goes on, currently working with Universal. It's super exciting. Uh, and we'll get into that. Uh, but first, I want to talk to you about your background, because mm-hmm. uh, I was reading an article about you the other day that surprised me that you started making music with your PlayStation. Yes. How did that go? It, it was interesting. It was uh, <laughs> it was basically like a DAW for the PlayStation. Um, so it was lots of like push X and that's your kick drum <laughs> and pick square and that's your snare, you know, things like that. But it was it was pretty uh intuitive for its time because i want to say that was like 2003 maybe um so yeah i got very into that and once i was trying to figure out how to get the beats out of the computer that's when the issue started (laughs) yeah (laughs) so were you able to export your music out of that not at all there was no system set up for that i mean i guess if i wanted to i could have took the audio out into Uh, like a thing but yeah that's at that time at 12 or however old I was like no way <laughs> yeah and what originally got you interested in producing music man I always wanted to DJ um but back in those days DJing was very expensive to get into um you had to yeah it just was it was super pricey and at 12 13 years old there was no way I was gonna shell out six thousand dollars for <laughs> two turntables and a mixer you know so it was like oh the next best thing is is producing but even still like i had to figure that side of it out so yeah i kind of hijacked the family computer and put fruity loops on there and started digging from there yeah so for those that may not be aware uh what is fruity loops is that still around or yeah fl studio they're like on their technically 13th edition i think but they're calling it fl 20 but i've had it like i used to be on it since fl 4 I use Ableton these days, but yeah, it's, it's definitely has a sweet spot in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> so is it more akin to Ableton than like Pro Tools or? Uh, I feel like they all have their own little things about them that make them different. Um, yeah, I feel like Ableton originally started out as like an electronic thing. Yeah. Um, FL was kind of just some dude just created it and was like, oh, this is cool. And put it out for the world. And it's and, free, right? Uh. <laughs> Yes and no. They have like a producer version. It's like 200 bucks or something. But back in my day, it was free. <laughs> yeah. I was a big proponent of, uh, of uh, hijacking software back then. <laughs> um, and you grew up kind of out in the middle of nowhere, right? Yeah, literally. <laughs> it's, it's about four hours away from here, more or less. Here being Dallas, by yeah. the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about four hours from Dallas. And um, I'd say the closest big city to it is... Odessa, Odessa, Texas, if anybody knows where that's at. It's kind of um, nice to call out a big city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like where people would like get excited to go. Like we're going to Odessa. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, there's there's nothing to do there. It, nothing. So I had to get out of there. You don't strike <laughs> me as the kind of person from the country. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'll take that as an honor because, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's I mean, it, don't get me wrong. I love that place. It has its quirks about it. But um, as far as what I was trying to do or, and what I'm doing, there was no space for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and you moved to the DFW area to originally go to Collin. Is that correct? That's right. So I had went to Collin 2010, 2011. And then um, eventually, like my schedule got a little hectic, and so I stopped going there. And then eventually came over to Media Tech, like 2012. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and what motivated that decision? Um, it was it was a place I had always wanted to come. Like when I took my, because in your senior year you take your what is it your college your college uh, your college days or whatever. We can go see whatever university you wanted to go see. So I came up here to see Media Tech back when it was at Dallas Labs, and uh, just fell in love with the place. You know, it was something I wanted to do. And coming from a small town, the idea of like, hey, there's a school where you can learn how to like engineer and make music and do these things um, was pretty cool to me. So I was like, yeah, let's, let's do it. So yeah, 2012 was the year I think I started. 
Yeah. Cool. That's when I started too. We must have crossed paths. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, and so what was your time here like? It was cool. It was a l- for me, it was a bit easier, right? Because I had already been making music for a few years at that point. Um, so those first, I don't know, that first, quite a few classes were kind of a breeze. Like I already knew about like um, the flow of everything and, and cabling and how to hook things up and so forth and so on. But for me, it was very much like I wanted to get my hands on as much tangible equipment as possible um, and just being able to turn knobs in real time is it you know it makes you understand better where the software comes from how things are supposed to sound so forth and so on yeah and had you worked on any analog equipment prior to time media tech no zero <laughs> <laughs> so it was good to like get in front of things and mess things up um knowing how to fix things and um getting to talk to some of the instructors about what their experiences were being in the studio, what they like, what they don't like, what to expect, um, and and getting to actually interface with somebody that has been where you've been. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, you told me that you found it very important to find work um, during your time at school, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah. How did that go? And, and how did you forge those early relationships? Man, for me, it was... It was very much, I had to hit the ground and get on the ground level with a lot of things as far as like working with different artists locally. So I remember my time at Media Tech, I was always bringing like certain rap artists through here or certain singers through here, just not only to get my chops up, but to build a relationship with them and ultimately, you know, coming up, coming up with a product. Um, so that was kind of my formula here. So there's actually a, quite a few Dallas acts that have kicked off their careers with me that we did their demos here we did their first you know bigger songs here yeah that's really cool yeah (laughs) um and then did any of those relationships carry forward once you graduated or yeah so uh a lot of those relationships and having those having that catalog and those bodies of work um with me is what got me noticed by some of the bigger acts in dallas some of the bigger producers and engineers and and kind of kept my name you know floating around in certain circles so you know it's just always about it's about maintaining getting those relationships and maintaining those relationships um like that's that's very pivotal very Mm. pivotal and uh what was some of the big stuff you worked on early um early so 2011 i did the little wayne um carter four um album i did a record on there um so that was like my first taste of the industry, but that kind of went sour. <laughs> yeah. So that was um a hard lesson to learn. Um, Do you want to get into that at all? Or nah, leave nah. it there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of um, there was a lot of legal stuff that happened in oh, that man. time period. But yeah, so but you know those things are important. Like you can leave all this. Uh, those things are important. Um, I feel like for me as a producer, because I was eighteen at the time, I believe. Yeah, so it, getting into those pitfalls and, and learning what's what and who to talk to and what to sign and what not to sign and what your lawyer is actually doing and so forth and so on. Those those are all hard lessons you have to learn. Um, so those are things I was able to. to I, I definitely don't believe in L's. They're definitely lessons for sure. You know, and that was pre media tech even. Yeah, that was pre media tech. So that you know coming into the school and then like having certain instructors to talk to about production and being in this situation um it let me know like okay i'm on a i'm on a good path right so because sometimes as creatives we can kind of get in our heads and and feel like we know everything or we don't know everything but we don't have anybody to speak to um so having those instructors and having like a network of other creative people here at the school um was was refreshing so it was nice to know like i wasn't alone in my you know crazy production thoughts <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we we don't have to get uh too deep into it we could leave it where you want it but i am curious as to as an 18 year old you know i guess that was post colin um during that or was that even pre colin that was like pre pre colin so how did you find yeah. a job like that so early it was um so back in those days I was 
selling beats online. This is this is the early days of selling beats online. I say early, but um, this is during that time period, 2010, 2011. Um, I was one of the bigger people on the online platform. Back then it was called SoundClick. And um, I was I was doing pretty well on that site. So there was a guy that um, used to collect tracks with Wayne and there was a guy from my hometown. And so there was um, a record. There was one other producer from my hometown. He was like the only other guy in town that made beats. Right. And so we would work on stuff together. I threw the song up online or I threw the beat up online and then one of Wayne's friends found it or whatever. And then it ended up becoming an album cut. And then it just got real blurry after that. <laughs> like, <laughs> things happened way too fast after that. You know, at 17, 18, you're not prepared. Like you think you're prepared. I wasn't prepared, you know. Um, but yeah, it it was that one was hap It happened to be like a luck of the draw thing. Um, but even still, I have relationships from back then um, that I was able to to maintain from that situation. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, there's it reminds me. I don't know a whole lot about it, but it reminds me of the situation with Old Town Road. I don't know if you're familiar mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very similar. Interesting. <laughs> um, so anyway, back you graduated in 2013. Um, and you told me that your career really picked up about 18 months ago yeah. as of recording this. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess during that time, you, you told me you were just grinding, right? Like feet on the ground. Yeah. Um, what filled your days back then? Man, all day, every day production. All day. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so because I have a I'm a firm believer in um, staying ready because I've the higher up you go, the more sessions you get into with some of these bigger artists. Um, you hear production that's incredible and you're like, Oh, I'm not that good. You know? And for me, it was like, okay, I need to do better. I need to do more. And it's just about putting those hours in, um, as much as you can. Right. Not every, I was in a kind of an ideal situation where I was able to be able to focus on production all day, every day. Not everybody has that luxury. Um, but you know, finding that time where you can is, is, crucial mm -hmm. yeah and were you having to support yourself by doing work outside of music production or were you just completely laser focused the whole time uh yeah so i would i would bounce it with like engineering so doing lots of mixing sessions lots of recording sessions which were like soul crushing at a certain point because <laughs> not every the the other this is kind of the dark side of, of recording is you realize not everyone that comes in to record is good <laughs> right that's that's not something that you're ever prepared for so <clears throat> there was a studio i was working at uh in fort worth actually um really cool spot um me and the owner were really really cool together um he had worked on a bunch of stuff for erica badu long story short um just it was lots of bad bad so songs music coming through there it was <laughs> terrible and it got to the point where i just was like i was over it and um you know after like four years there or something while still um producing at the same time i just finally i realized like okay this i need to focus more so, more on the production side um and you know about six months of doing nothing nothing but producing um things started um, looking up, you know, and I was able to work my deal into Universal and and get all of these other things going on. But yeah, it just was six months of I was like, I'm not doing anything but producing and sending beats out, talking to people for six months straight. I did that every day for six months. Man, <laughs> yeah, it was it was crucial. But I was at a I was at a point where I was like, okay, this isn't working. I need to figure something else out, you know. So this question might be a little aggressive or a little taboo, <laughs> okay. but um, so you, we'll get to your universal and, and bigger work here in a sec. But mm -hmm. um, I think probably what you said about uh, finding talent that may not be the mm -hmm. most talented, right, mm -hmm. that you have to produce. That's probably something that a lot of producers <laughs> go through, know. particularly in their early career. Yeah. How do you deal with that? Oh, goodness, man. It, it becomes the the it's a scale right you have um what i'm willing to do 
or what I'm getting paid for versus what's good, right? Like mm-hmm. you have to really weigh those things in the balance and and understand what you're willing to put up with and what you're not. <laughs> um, but for me, the fact that I was like uh, I was a, a head engineer at the studio, it was important to make sure that we were maintaining a steady cash flow, right? So you start getting into the business side of things. So you understand like you you understand the business side of it where it's okay, it doesn't matter if it's good or not. Um, we got to keep the lights on, you know, that you have that react, the real side of things. So, um, it was a struggle. (laughs) It was a struggle for sure. Um, but I think that comes with it is for me as an engineer and producer, it helped me better coach and guide some of the acts and make them understand what they need to do improve. It helped me better articulate um, how to give direction in terms of like when we're in the studio and they keep messing up this take or it needs to sound like this or it's just terrible, period, and we need to rethink everything about it. Um, understanding how to relay that in a um, in a soft way, <laughs> in a less um soul crushing way <laughs> is uh it was it was uh took time took time to learn that but it was necessary yeah and, and what was the breakthrough moment <sighs> i don't know if i think it was i was talking to the the head the studio owner and he just explained to me like you know everything's not going to be good this is just the nature of the business we're in The same way, like, you might have a song that you like, but, you know, she might not like it. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's taste is different. Everybody has their things that they do and don't like. So it's just respecting the taste um, and finding a middle ground in that, you know, like, okay, I can live with this. It doesn't need to be so perfect here or they're happy with it. That's the other side of it is a lot of people forget that it's not your song, you know, like, and I'm speaking purely from the, uh, engineering standpoint right it, like it's not your song it's their song your job is to make the client happy so um whatever that may entail um that's your job to do so uh i i i'm a dumb video and film guy right like um i i want to understand more of the difference between what you say is production and like engineering mm-hmm. um so like on a daily basis what is like the practical difference between those two things i mean the practical difference, I I look at it more so as like a Venn diagram, right? Like there's lots of things that kind of go together um, as far as like um, picking good sounds and tones and, and understanding sound quality. Like the, that's definitely in the middle. Um, on the engineering side, it's it's a lot more technical. I feel like knowing how to work Pro Tools or work whatever DAW you're in um, and knowing knowing your hardware and knowing your software, right? Knowing the technical aspects of things. Um, And then on the product on the production side is like actually making the music, actually putting things together, um, actually knowing where to get the instruments from and the musicians from and being able to put them in a room and basically put the record together. Um, of sorts you know so it's that side of it so i guess in in the film world it would be um being like a film editor versus a director yeah you know so that that, i think that would be a parallel between those yeah and uh what was the moment that things started looking at and how did that fall into place man i'd say november 2018 i think that was when i got my first notice of um nope i'm lying i was september 2018 it was when i did my deal yeah and for me it what's kind of funny is it goes back to i was doing the six months of just like working on beats working on beats working on beats setting it out maintaining relationships and then that was um in august and then i finally i had one of the a&rs reach out to me that I had been in contact with for months, um, just building the relationship. And he said, you know, we're looking for X, Y, and Z. Um, let's, we'd like to get you in here. And so that was just, 
it was just goes back to the hard work, being able to be ready, having the having good skills, having a good skill set, having your product ready, being able to perform at that level. It was very crucial. Yeah. And what was that like, like immediately stepping into a bigger world? It was in. Well, here's the thing I feel like with most industries is. Not everybody goes from zero to 100, right? There's a very few amount of people. So everything in this business is kind of gradual, right? So for me, it was like, okay, <clears throat> you know, 2016, I might have done one session with a pretty big producer. And then the next year, I might have done like a few more sessions with a few more producers and a pretty big rapper. And, you know, so by the time it comes time for you to like really be ready, you've done you've done enough. And you have a decent amount of skill set to be able to get the work done in the room. <clears throat> so that's um, that is it's just a build up. I feel like you have to build up to it. Yeah. And uh, so your job now, um, actually, let's let's go over some of the bigger mm -hmm. things you've worked on. Um, tell me about some of that since I guess since that time, right? Yeah. So since that time, I've done. Um, Birds of Prey, which is the Harley Quinn movie coming out in February. Uh, I didn't really, I didn't make that connection <clears throat> when we were doing the interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the Harley Quinn film that's coming out. Um, oh, that's cool. And then I have the Trolls Two movie that comes out in May. Um, I have a few records coming out, and next week. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, really, yeah, next yeah, week? Yeah, next week. It was kind of abrupt because, uh, yeah. <laughs> this entire year I was like, I need to put out more music. Like nothing's working. Cause even then, like when you're, when you get in the label system, you still, that's when like the real work begins, right? Like you, <laughs> it's very strange. Like before you get signed, it's kind of like you're in the minor leagues, right? You feel mm -hmm. like you might be doing all this work and you're really good. Da, 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 da. But then when you get your deal, then it's like, okay, now I really have to work. I have to like, <laughs> I have to go to the gym every day. You know, like you have to do, you have to really get on it. And that's where, like, you see a lot of people fall off is because they're like, oh, I'm signed now. I don't have to do anything. Like, my name holds weight. And it's like, <laughs> nah, like, I'd rather have me as a brand be able to stand on its own, you know. And so, uh, yeah, it's it's just there's been a lot of cool things happening. A lot of cool things. Yeah. I, I want to learn more about, like, specifically what your day is like when you're working on, like, the Harley Quinn movie or Trolls. like. What is that day to day process? Man, for me, it's I literally have a there's a guy at the company and he sends me an email <laughs> and says, hey, we're working on A, B and C. Right. So whatever project they happen to get tossed that day. Right. And so I, it's up to me. I'm like, oh, OK, like that seems cool. I want to work on that thing, you know, whether it be a movie or a TV project or whatever. And so then I work on it, whatever the case may be, whether they're looking for like electronic music or they're looking for like trap music or whatever the case may be. My job is to have, fill that void of sorts. And it's it gets easier having that that um, point A to point B as far as like major label, like that side of it's sweet, but it's still being able to um, to do the work. That's all those all those hours come in handy, you know, knowing how to do it. So yeah, it's 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 a lot easier these days to get things done, but it took a while. <laughs> so when you get tossed a project like mm -hmm. that, do you have to find a studio or like what's your actual day? Yeah, okay, yeah. So my actual day is I literally wake up and go sit at my desk and tap on keys until I get tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 you know, I'll watch anime or something while I'm working, but that's kind of it. It and I might take a nap at some point during the day. Um, yeah, it's my day is very, it's it's cool, it's amazing, um, but it's very much. Um, I, for me, I'm still putting in those hours. Yeah, you know, still putting in those hours. So I still treat it like I don't have a situation and don't have access to these things, and still I'm trying to. You got to go in the gym and shoot, man. You just got to, you know hit the free throw line every day and just do it. Yeah. And so you're actually creating music, obviously, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. As then I guess that'll be used as like music during the film or mm -hmm. like, how does that? 
Yeah. So they'll tell me generally like there's certain spots. They're like, hey, we need like um, a funk record or something here. So then what I'll do is I'll start either reaching out to musicians or I'll start like the groundwork musically and then send it out to musicians um, to to finalize the record. And so, um, yeah, it's it's for me, it's it's pretty I've simplified my process. Right. It's not that complex or pretty. But it's just, <laughs> it, you know, it's it's not all like they make it sound on TV. It's I, I wake up and I just put music together. That's that's a beautiful thing I get to do every day. That's yeah. so cool. Well, that's awesome, man. I really appreciate you talking to us. Um, but you want to talk a little bit about your record or how can people find you and listen to your music? Yeah. So I'm super heavy on Instagram. I need to get off Instagram, but follow me <laughs> <laughs> at Ish D. Um, yeah, that's the best way to like reach me, check and see what I'm doing. Um, yeah, that just hit me on there. Cool. Yeah. And uh, your album is called, it's from a couple years ago, right? Yeah, so I put out a house uh, album called Marina's Melody. It, so for anybody that knows me, it's like house is my second love. And so, um, yeah, it's just a house project I put together with a few of my friends. And um, yeah, it, it's performed pretty well pretty well so i'll be djing um at the virgin hotel um for new year's eve so wow that's cool yeah the brand new yeah the brand new hotel so i'll be the one to break it in nice yeah well awesome well thank you again so much for joining us on the media tech podcast um if you're listening to this uh please subscribe wherever you are um i'll also make sure to head over to the youtube if that's not where you're listening to this we have a lot of great content over there uh in january we actually have what's called a graduated episode a little mini doc um on ish uh, which is going to be coming out and we've got several more uh we have a live sound mixer uh for cnn in atlanta um he mixes live sound for millions of viewers on a daily basis we have his episode coming out in a couple of weeks uh, we do a lot of tutorials for uh, video film audio things like that um, so yeah make sure you go ahead over to the YouTube and hit the subscribe button and that bell icon and if you're interested in checking out media tech or if you're interested in a career like ish or uh, if you want a career in film or makeup acting mobile app development uh, the list goes on uh, make sure you check out mediatech.edu and uh, schedule a tour come out to the Dallas or Houston locations and uh Trust me when I say the minute you walk in and see the studios and facilities here, you will be sold. Uh, great campus, great uh, instructors. It's awesome. Uh, but anyway, again, thank you, Ish. And thank uh, you. we'll see you guys again next week with another podcast.